It's not just any shockwave. Here it is. Savage was holding it. Yet. Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up, Fortnite fam? It's your favorite Fortnite commentator, Monster Deface. And today, we are back with another Fortnite Battle Royale video. In today's video, we're taking a look at Mongrel, Tayson, and user 2RX61EU7ZF, aka Mitro. Please, my friend, change your name. These guys were popping off during the FNCS warmups. One of the greatest teams in the EU. We're starting off with their 15 elimination game. And I'm going to teach you guys their entire draw spot, their entire route, and all that good stuff. But before we jump into the rest of the video here, do not forget to, of course, subscribe to this channel if you enjoy competitive news, content, and all that kind of good stuff. One of the most active channels out there in the Fortnite community. And I try to provide value to the gameplay. Let's get it, guys. All right, Fortnite fam, here we have it. Phase Mongrel, Tayson from Team E11, and user Mitro here coming in hot. The battle bus going from east to west with it it's a stark industry drop this is a hot spot a much 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 contended location mitro is trying to alpha up for the big guaranteed pump spot and he's got taste in to back him up here as well seeing that mitro has it to himself notice how they're going to split on off and now they have this entire draw spot another upgraded pump shotgun here as well for phase mongrel so big come up and already they're off to a very very beast mode start storm tags also going out left and right here Mitro with the game plan on deck. Grabs the AR, looks out to the outskirts and tries to find some tags there. Stark Industries, guys, we know it's a very, very just powerful location. My gosh, I still don't know where all the chests are here because I don't land here very often. But I will say this. Yesterday, I was landing here. And, you know, as much as I was getting bodied playing some Fortnite here live live with the boys, um, I had a good time exploring this draw spot. It is a very, very interesting place to land. And... Iron Man, yo, Iron Man will beat that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this guy, this guy's a savage, bro. You gotta be careful. But it, it seems like once you once you figure it out, you can see there. A couple headshots, a little bit of teamwork. You're gonna take him out. He drops the volt key card. And you're good to go to go control that volt. The thing about this whole draw spot is the way it all plays out. Is that at the end of the day. At the end of the day, people rotate through here and find a ton of loot. I don't know if it's the same in trios. We will be finding out. As this early game is developing here and everything's going on, let's go ahead and take a look at that battle map, guys. We're going to go ahead and zoom right on out. Press that number six on your keyboard. Take a look here. This is an extended drop here. An extended drop. It's going to go far. It's going to go weird through the terrain, up and down the mountains. A lot of fights are going to break out from here till then. So we're going to watch how that's all going to play out. Also, though, I want to open up the map. Let's open up that full screen map, man. Let's show you guys where everyone else is dropping. What spots are free right now? 92 players remain in the game. Take a look at these guys. Taking the ultimate split drop. Rasko, Kami, and Artur. Okay. That's a crazy split right here. They have big control of the field right now. A little bit of a fight right now, but it's a fight against the Stark bots. So don't worry about it. Lazy Lake being contested. Who's in Lazy Lake? Versa, Jake, and Swaps versus Fury, Rajar. Down below, Steelix has this drop spot to himself. Another nice split drop right here, too. And look at this drop spot right here. All split up as well. So, a lot of control, man. A lot of control. It just shows you that there's so much space on the Fortnite world, man. Plenty of space for people to do a lot with. But, okay. Let's go ahead and pause, get caught up here. So, it seems like they did their loot route. Everyone's all... Racked up on loot. Yeah, yeah. These guys got all purple pumps, max shield, and extra to take for the road. It looks like it's about to go down. They're diving straight off the high ground, down onto the team down here. Remember, this is the squad Mitro put some shots in on. Let's watch this fight unfold. Here we have it. Pinch already happening. You're noticing. Oh, you're noticing the distraction. Beautiful. That's what you want to do here. Mitro goes off to the left. They build a wall. Don't even see Mongrel landing on him. That's going to already result in a couple extra shots here. These guys are down a member too, mind you. Not looking good for them. They're doing this with no loot as well, guys. And by loot, I mean material. Should clarify. They're pushing this fight with no material. Taste and thug life with it. Way in the mix right now. Gets tagged a few times. Has to pump the brakes. Mongro now forced to possibly go up. He's doing a little scout down below. Mitro playing the widespread here. Once again, Mitro is the lurker of the crew here. Looking to put down shots, make sure no one is free to beam his squad mates. 
There is definitely risk involved here. It looked like a two-man team, but it was their split drop. And now all of a sudden, look at that. You're watching the angle once again from Mitro come in super effective. Let's switch over to people jumping into the box right now. It's Taysen looking to step up to the plate. Let's not forget, Taysen is a champion. Put some respect on his name here. Already working his way around the side. Chug Splash are going out. That's a calm. You know they understand that's happening here. Looks like Mitro's in the mix here with a pinch on the other side. Taysen up above. And Mongrel looks like he's gaining control now of the fight. Good work so far, keeping their distance. No one's too deep in the mix here. The one problem with working all the angles is that you leave yourself open to getting punished or collapsed on by multiples. Oh, Micho's gonna eat Paco alive for breakfast now. And looks for the follow up here. Another big shot onto Jachu. And there comes the cleanup now as Mongrel walks through, backs up his teammate there. One for one for one. Everyone finds themselves. A little bit of a piece of the action here. Well played. I see the subs ringing in right now as we're doing this recording here. Thank you guys so very much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, my merch should be arriving to my home soon. Can't wait to show it up for y'all. That MonsterDFace.com. Pick up your merch, y'all. It's the old baby. And also, shout out to Punish with the Prime and Smeagol, of course, for coming in as well. Yo, appreciate you guys. You guys will now forever be immortalized in this YouTube video. Let's go. Heck yeah, man. What do you guys think for those of you guys tuned into this video today? Did you guys enjoy the console review? Do you guys want more of that kind of stuff? Let me know. I definitely saw the vibes looking high in the comment section. A lot of people have been very much appreciative that I've been trying to, you know, provide another voice for a community that is otherwise unheard. Um, word, man. I think, I think there's just a lot of talent out there and people are slept on. So we'll see. We'll see. Only time will tell how things continue to develop. But... You best believe your boy's going to continue to do him, right? Be innovative. Do different stuff. Don't be the same. Don't be a sheep, y'all. All right? Do what you want to do. That's that's the truth right there, ain't it? That's the truth right there, ain't it? Here we go, baby. Mongru already marking back onto the vault. They're probably looking to go back and pick up some spare shields that they left over. Okay, okay. It's not even shields. It's Shockwave's impulses here. Came back for those. You see Mitro has a lot of space in the inventory now. After that fight there. Burning through his movement. This is the second time now that Taysen is the one holding Shockwave's. This could be a designated thing. Taysen's like, dude, I'll hold that. I'll also hold that Harpoon too. So two Harpoons on the group right here. I respect his decision to hold the Harpoon. We saw E11 Jonas take big advantage of having a Harpoon in the FNCS Invitational solo division. We know it becomes very, very important in that end game. Interesting to see people running in solos because it's such a important spot, right? To sacrifice towards one thing. But in trios, you can, you can divvy it up a little more. You can divvy it up a little more and it makes more sense. And now... Looks like Micho's going to find himself some more goods here. They're just looking to clear out the area. Another set of shockwaves. Nice. That's the most important thing about this drop spot, guys, is that getting shockwaves off of this drop in Doom's Domain is literally the reason why they are busted and very, very strong POIs. Besides, besides the purple shotgun. Like, this one's definitely because of the purple shotguns and the movement. If I had to, if I had to put a... A value between Stark Industry and Doom's Domain. I think the argument is that Stark is definitely better just all around. Rifts underneath you. Natural high ground. So, you know, you're probably not going to get third party as easily, right? Looks like a team's rolling in though as we talk about third parties. Then the loot. The loot just overall seems a little better. It's actually a vehicle rolling on by. Taysen's going to catch wind of that. He can definitely hear it. They're going to drive off the cliff. They don't want the smoke. They don't want the action from the boys right here. Here it is. Zone one's finally gonna come to a close now soon. That's right, it's another monster morning. I forgot to show off the mug today. Yo, what's up guys? Y'all thought I was gonna forget before this video's over. It's the Colossal Titan today. Mug the day on deck, baby. Shirt of the day. See the kid? Yes, sir. See the kid? 
really out here right now. Having a good day, man. Oh, YouTube, I forgot to tell y'all. Um, I chopped my hair off, dudes. I know normally I have a hat on, so most of y'all don't even know what, what was underneath the cat. But for those of you guys that follow me on Twitter, did get to see. I cut it off, man. I had long hair. And uh, yeah, I chopped it off, man. I chopped it off. It's all gone. It's that time in the video where I tend to ask you guys, what's up, man? What are you guys doing while you're watching the video? How's the day going, man? What's on the menu? What's in store? A little bit of a rotate coming out here. Let's look at the map, though. This is an interesting way for them to rotate. Okay, yes. This actually makes a lot of sense. They're going towards that dead side of the location right now instead of going straight inwards, playing the storm line pretty nicely here. Big risk taking a vehicle, right? Because it's so slow in this grassland, but I mean, it's it's faster, I guess, than, than going on foot, right? So makes a lot of sense. Now running through the leftover loot here. That is just a error there visually with the replay client, so don't believe it. There are no chests there. The skin's actually fire. I just realized the outline is like all dark like that. Makes it look like a comic book for sure. Definitely sick. <laughs> the only person without... Oh no, alright. So two of these guys don't have high material counts. Mitro and Mongrel. Taste is the one that's kind of capped out here. Mongrel's still rocking that green AR. He does have a sniper too. See, this is the thing. I feel like snipers are also crucial to the equation of a trio team. They just feel very, very important to have. It's definitely a bail kind of tool, right? It's an initiator. If you get the headshot to kick off a battle, like Sniper Man, definitely underrated. Definitely like what Mitro's doing as well. He was capped out on material, but since Mongrel still needs material, he was hitting it as he was passing by, so Mongrel can pick it up. Good teamwork here. Good teamwork here. said this before man Mitro needs to change his name first of all but Taysen too man imagine being E11 Taysen on a team with a player like FaZe Mongrel right just all that all that attention that comes to you from being on the squad here and someone comes through for the first time and sees your name and they're like they read that N-O-S-Y-A-T 11-E that's what they're going to read, bro. And that's what people are going to assume his name is. You get what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't even, it's, it doesn't even look like English. Dudes out here be going crazy, man. I'm not going to like attempt to pronounce it. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that Taysen's doing it all wrong here, man. Doing it all wrong here. Battle going on the outskirts as they were storm coast into the new zone. I think it's Nyrox up above. Yes, it is. Nyrox's team is lit up. Looking to slow down versus PNK. Versu and Jack on the low ground here. Swaps is on that tarp as well. Taysen starting it off. Yo, this is the second time now. Taysen's being like a potential initiator. Getting into the thick of it. Some teams just need someone who's consistent with it. Looking for the headshot here. Oh, he finds it right in the wake of the shots coming out. That is beautiful. Big shots. Now Nyrox gets ripped again. For all of his shield here. A little bit of a hit fire for that fast fire rate. You guys already know. Crash pack comes out. Taysen's working his way from the backside in. Just to make sure he does not lose track. But more importantly, gets pinched from behind. He is very much aware this is a team underneath him. Beautifully done by Taysen. Just in that instance there too. I know the frags are going to go over to uh, Mongrel. For catching the picks there. But Taysen did a really good job just playing defense at that point right switching the role from offense into being support for the battle big game awareness there now he's gonna bounce out grab all the goods here yeah one bouncer to pick up multiple bouncers and shockwaves now he is chilling looks like mongo's gonna get punished big time here but he still has that little bit of high ground. He's chilling. They have 400 ammunition. This could be a complete grief fest right now. If he really wanted. I think they're deciding. All right. We've done enough. This is a big victory for us. We got five eliminations. Let's move on. Some good early game decisions, man. 
They win their first game fight. They win a mid-game fight for a recap. This is kind of vibes right here. Find some loot here too. No metal though for Mongrel, which is unfortunate, but it's all good. Now upgrading to another AR as well. GG's. Well played. Zone here favoring their side too. So they have the long rotate. They make it work. Now it's coming to their size. This is definitely going to be the dead side of the zone here. Big time for them. Look at how they're trying to play this nice and cheeky here, though. They're hiding out below the little ridge now. Ooh, tasting right behind, too. Swaps is going to walk off on his own to go find some loot. Oh, no. Here it is. This is the opportunity. If you if you 3 2 1 this guy and then Tayson shockwaves in, like it's over, right? Even more so. He's walking up. Yeah, definitely. Now he's definitely too far. 3 2 1. Doesn't even need to use a shockwave or anything like that. It's going to be an instant delete right there. Instant delete. Shots coming in from the distance. Sniper now in Tayson's hands, too. It's upgraded. It's a 3v2 situation. They're thinking about it. I think they're thinking about the shockwave. Okay, they are. They're just going to go and regroup up. Get to zone here now and play the hold game because they can. The wall, the defensive wall set up already too. And now they're ahead of the storm zone. Beautifully done as well here now. Perfect. Perfect. Not a single player on this team is controller. For those of you guys wondering. This is a, a full on mouse and keyboard trio here, guys. Full on mouse and keyboard trio. Okay, okay. 3v2 situation, he goes for height, mistakes were made. Beams are going to come out from both sides, though. Mongrel left to depend on himself there. Mitra's going to go in and drop Verso. Now Taste is going to find Jackie as well. GG. More shots coming in because the battle was close to the line there, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just drops the team here. It's something about being so mechanically gifted from a player like Mongru that they can do reckless things like like that, let's just say, right? And get away with it, right? Completely jump in there, get their shield ripped apart, nearly just get melted out the lobby, right? But be fast enough, fast enough to bounce back, fast enough to just edit his way out, create two boxes, right? Don't make any errors either, like, it's just, it's just something that happens all the time. Happens all the time with these crazy mechanical players. They can do things that other people can't. Like, they can do things that other people can't. And one of those things is definitely bailing themselves out of those weird situations like that. Where the pressure's coming in. They put themselves in a kind of a, a desperate situation, right? Back against the wall. I like how they are on dead side right now, though. When they weren't, like, they weren't granted dead side by any means. They started here, right? They should be in the... They would have otherwise been in the cluster. But, like, they worked their way all the way around that storm line, taking fights in the process. And, I mean, it pays off now. I was about to say, what just happened? 2,000 damage above the threshold. Yeah, go figure. They already have eight eliminations as a crew. <laughs> kind of kind of insane, to be honest. Ooh, Okay. Another 3 2 1 on the cone right there. Lucky for him, it was metal. Any other material would have probably been a big punishment there. Looking for some more shots now. Ooh, they're just holding his team. They're about to get in the zone there. Yeah, Mongrel finds a pixel right there. That was dirty. Nice job. Ooh, the shots that they're putting in now, forcing the team below them to start firing in. It looks like a snipe comes into Mongrel. Mongrel gets punished big time. That one med kit is going to pay off here. Airdrop comes in too. Wait a second. This airdrop is coming in. It's outside the zone, right? Does that mean half and half out was just revealed to the whole lobby? No. Oh, no, it's not. It's close though. It looked like it was outside the zone. I was like, no way. Is that a glitch? They still get a very, very good half and half out. Holy crap. Not bad. Not bad at all. Here we go now. 
Time to decide when is it appropriate to make a move here. The team below them already on the rotate out. Now they're last behind. They're going to wait. Oh my gosh. This guy doesn't have any HP. That's a free frag, right? I want to see from Taysen's perspective. Taysen's the only one off in the distance. Okay, he was focused on a completely different team. This guy's a solo down there. They're trying to figure it out now. Are they going to find this frag and be able to harpoon this loot up? Because that will be huge for them right now. They've already used so much. Also, are they going to hold height or shockwave across? They're going to shockwave across for sure, right? Oh, yes. Beautiful. I just read this call here. Think about this for a second now, guys. Since they wait for the zone to pull itself and they hold back, obviously other teams are going to want to play for height because they think that they're taking advantage. They're coming in late. They're going to base up. Now, what you are you know, have to be cautious of is that team that's coming in late that has that very height or that very high ground and is close enough to shockwave in. The way that they're set up defensively here since they're not eye-to-eye -eye level means that they are definitely suspect to getting shockwaved on. Let's see if it's going to be a successful one, though. Mr. Savage is keeping his eyes on him. It's not just any shockwave. Here it is. Savage was holding the edit. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no. Why'd they do him like that? Ouch. Yo. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no. Bye-bye, Mr. Savage. Holy. He just got hit with the dirtiest play I think we've seen all year long. Two colossal trios go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. First and second place right there. Oh, no. My gosh. Oh my gosh the next eu review by the way is going to be on that team right there so interestingly enough they're going to end up still clutching out <laughs> damn bro that was crazy round of applause all right f in the chat f in the comment section for the savage man i don't think i've ever seen him get embarrassed like that that was uh that was a rare treat guys that was a rare treat Okay, though. Taysen, once again, use that shockwave to cross. Bouncer going to come out to meet Taysen up on height. Someone's going to land up, though. Someone shockwaves in. It's Alpha there. Or Alpha. Alpha gets taken out. Nicely done. Benji by himself. You can see spreading out to do his rotate. Yo, the feed is lighting up right now. Milan's going to fall. Carrot dies to the zone here. Tomas finding frags. Chapix finding frags. This is a completely stacked lobby still. Ref Scar's still in this game as well. Here it is, another shockwave. You're seeing the power of the shockwaves now. Remember, I said this at the start. The thing about shockwaves is that they, they are literally the best rotate in the game, like hands down. You're watching them just run high ground because they have shockwaves. They're just going zone to zone. No refresher either yet. Like, I haven't even seen them really be able to pick up loot outside of just like the Mr. Savage frag, right? Because they dropped their harpoons already. This is why, like, if honestly, if they wouldn't have dropped a harpoon for one of those snipers before, with Taysen having that one harpoon be a big difference for them on high ground, I know. Not that it matters, though. Not that it really matters. They have so much AR, guys. It's, it's just... Oh, no. Oh, no. They're three... They're Okay, they were three-weighing Benji for a second here. They're still putting a lot of pressure in here. Jumping perspective to perspective to see. They're just looking all over the place right now. It's just AR fire. Mongrel already finding his fifth elimination, guys. Benji finding falls to Blaster in the kill feed. Rasko's going to find Nate there. Nate gets the exchange off the storm line. Let's see what Mitro is. Mitro finding any Elims? Nope. Just putting pressure down. Doesn't matter. Legendary burst rifle still coming in pretty good for the damage that he can put down. Let's see if he tested the bush. Yes, he does. Free fire the bush there. He finds a little shot. Scully's going to be in front of Taysen now. More shots coming in. Mongrel crash pads across here. Someone was trying to challenge him as well. They're trying to figure it out. Looks like it's not going to be enough. Mitro's had enough. He gets in, so he wants to get his hands dirty here. Boom. Finds Castery. 
looks around. There's loot underneath him. Another shot comes in. It's Thomas. Mitro scrambling now, trying to stay alive here. Has to heal. Where's his teammates? Mongrel backs up Mitro just a little bit there. Puts Thomas back on his ease. Okay, let's pull the camera out here. Let's see what's going on, right? These things are getting a little lost in the sauce, so you guys can understand. Tayson and Mongrel are going back up. It goes back over old builds. Mitro was pushed by Thomas, but that little bit of extra pressure pushes him back. So now Thomas is forced back into the low ground. Here's what the low ground's looking like, all right? Browner on the ultimate low here, following his own. Everyone else is in the congestion. So now they're going to be able to work their way top down and pretty much conclude this game. You have to assume they're not going to find a lot of frags because of all the old builds. But I'm going to watch it from uh, Mitro's perspective. So I think he's going to be the one that gets into the mix here. You can already tell that he tried it once. I mean, it punished him, but he's got the lowest HP. So if there's anyone who needs to go down, it's Mitra. Because he can't stay in the storm line. That's how you decide right now. You hear the heals going off. So you know the team's got a lot of HP. Mago makes a weird error. Finds himself in the zone off a of crash that play, unfortunately. Now it's up to Tayson to stay on ultimate height. He's the only one remotely enough HP. Now Mongrel and Mitro have to go in. They have to get in. Let's see if they find something here. Two players left down below. It's the funnel. This is easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one. Oh, he finds it, too. Follows up. The edit now. Mage on the run right here. GG for Mitro to find Mage, too. Got Castery as well. That was a 15 elimination game, guys. 15. Teen elimination game early mid game late game this is why they're one of the scariest trios out there on an fncs warm-up mind you the best teams are the best it's a grand finals day ggs